Hello there. Welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you for stopping by my channel today. I'm working with pattern paper again, so get comfy and let's get crafty. Today I'm going to be making a fractured card. I'm going to use one of these honeybee hexagon dies to for the layout. I have some pattern paper from my stash. I've selected two of the same pieces of paper from that paper pad. Um, I also have a piece of white scrap paper for to work on. I have a black cardstock piece for my mat. And then I have this um, kind of seafoam green cardstock for my card base. And my nails are freshly painted. And I can't get anything off my desk. So, you know, I also have a coordinating piece for the hexagon die. The first thing I'm going to do is prep my card base by scoring it at five and a half inches. This will be a USA two size card. That means it is four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. It is a portrait style top flap card, so a tent fold card. I am starting with my card base because everything's going to be based off of those measurements. And I went into this card with um, a photograph in mind with no measure, like I had a photograph. I did not have any measurements other than the quarter inch strips of paper I'll be using. <laughs> so I have some thoughts on a better way to do this, but we're going to go with what I started, how I started. So the next thing I did was trim this black mat down to before by five and a quarter inches. That creates a small border around the mat and it just kind of frames everything together. <clears throat> So the one thing I did see when I was looking at images for this card was that you needed to have a workable surface or a, a, I don't know, this is scrap paper. I don't know what else you would call it besides a workable surface, but I cut this down to three and three quarters by five inches. So that creates another layer. And then the other thing I saw was that um, the fractured piece was kind of created by strips of cardstock. So I took another piece of black cardstock and cut a um, quarter inch strip. Because I am working with a hexagon shape, I know I need six of these quarter inch strips of black cardstock. So then I picked which die would fit the card base best, which is why I've got my card base and my first mat there, and I decided to go with a slightly smaller hexagon. I'm going to send this through my um, die cut machine. I'm using my um, impress machine, I forgot what it was called. And now that I have my hexagon cut out, I am going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see how I'm working or what I'm working on. And then I'm going to adhere the hexagon to the front of this um, piece of scrap paper. This is just copy paper. It, um, I needed thin paper so it didn't create a ton of bulk just in case, you know, but I'm using liquid adhesive for most of this um, pattern uh, paper piecing. And that's important because I will need to be able to slide the papers around a bit. So I just kind of figured out where I want to put this and what angle I went with the points um, going up and down as opposed to a flat surface on the top and bottom. That's just because that was what I wanted that day. All right, so um, once I get this on my um, card panel here, I'm trying to make sure that it is mostly centered. I'm eyeballing it for sure but I'm mostly centered. <clears throat> the next step is to add glue to the back of each of these quarter inch strips of pattern paper and glue it to the white card or the white um, scrap paper. So there needs to be glue all the way to the edge of the white paper. Um, and then I'm going down each edge. One thing I wasn't sure of was how to um, overlap them. So I, um, I cut angles off and then I realized it was easier to just um, glue it down uh, and then use, take my scissors in there and cut the angle off. So this is, um, I'm not sure if this should be this step, the first or the second step at all in this. Um, I don't know. I, ha I have ideas on how I would do this again, and we'll talk about them when we get there. So anyway, I have um, glued all the paper down, and then I went back and trimmed them off so that they're kind of at an angle when they meet each other. I've added glue to the back of those strips the rest of the way, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut them off with scissors. And then it's time to start putting our paper in here. 
Now, this is where I think that maybe I could have done something um, better or differently. So from what I saw on Pinterest, this is the proper order of how to do this card. But I think my next step is where I could have um, made a better plan. So what I did was I just took this full four by six sheet of paper. I trimmed where I, like I drew lines where I thought I needed to trim. I trimmed it down with my um, guillotine trimmer. And then I ended up bringing my Fiskars trimmer in because it's a little bit more, um, when I'm cutting the angles, it gives me a better way of cutting, like a, an easier way to cut the, tr the, the angles. So I've, I've got this piece cut that is, and this is real time footage. Like right here, this is how slow I was really moving on this card. So I've got this piece cut that will fit into this triangle. And now I'm trying to figure out how to actually make it fit. And this is where I started thinking, what am I doing wrong? How could I do this more easily? And don't get me wrong. I continued on this path. But the whole time I was putting these pieces together like this, I was thinking, how could I have better created this pattern? And this is what I came up with in my brain. In my brain, I think what I should have done was taken this piece of pattern paper, trimmed it to the same size as my white scrap paper, and then used a paper trimmer well, first cut the hexagon out of it and then used a paper trimmer to cut it into sections as opposed to trying to trim down this paper so that it fit into each of the sections of my card. Um, I think I'm going to make this card again and try it that way and see if it, um, see if it works better. Because this angle was really hard, like the right, the getting the triangle edge right was really difficult um, to kind of to plan. And, it, and I didn't get it exactly right on all of the pieces. So I ended up having to figure out how to cover up those gaps, which was something else that I hadn't thought of when I started this card. Now, to be fair, when I started this card, I just, I had, this is one of the ones I had seen um, pop up in my social media feeds a lot lately with pattern paper and old school card techniques. I did not research the best method to make this card. In my brain, I knew how to do it. Clearly, I did not. I mean, I should have done a little more research, let's be honest, because I've never made this style card before. Um, and I should have listened to those who have done it before. Let's just, let's just be real. I should have done that. And, um, while this is a perfectly acceptable method of doing this card, hundred percent acceptable method, I don't think it was the most effective and for sure my pattern does not line up and I got glue everywhere. Okay. I got glue everywhere. So for sure, this was not the most effective method of making sure the pattern all went the same direction. Now for this particular piece of pattern paper, I don't know that that matters. It is also not the most um, effective method of making sure there's no gaps in between my black cardstock strips and the pattern paper. But anyway, it, I, I kept doing it. I kept sticking that paper in there and going back to my trimmer and adding the angle on there and just kind of fidgeting until I got it. And don't get me wrong. I love how it turned out. I think this was um, an awesome exercise in um, brainstorming, but also it was a really good reminder to stop and think before I do, because what I thought was going to be a really quick and easy, simple project actually took me substantially longer than I thought it would. So if I had taken just a couple of minutes and um, pondered it or researched a little bit more, I probably could have found a better method of doing this. So without researching, I'm going to recreate this card. And I don't know that I'll make a video of it. Now, maybe I'll do a short. I'm not sure. It depends how it turns out. I'm gonna, for sure going to video it. Um, if it turns out to be substantially faster 
then for sure I'll make a video if it's just like another method of doing it that was not particularly easier than this method, then I'll probably just either put it up on my Instagram feed or make a short. I'm not sure yet. So, all right, because of the gaps, I had to, I had to figure out some way to fix those gaps. So what I decided to do was just cut some more of those quarter inch pieces of black cardstock and um, glue them back down. I think there's one place I actually glued two down because I was not wasn't really paying attention at this point. I was still kind of pondering how I could do this better. So I was working kind of in autopilot mode, but also in um, um, habit or, you know, anyway. So adding it to that black background really makes it pop, especially because we have those fracture lines. Now this fracture style of card, you can use any shape. I think most common is a square, but any shape die that you have that has hard edges. I'm not sure that it would work really great for a, like a heart or a circle or an oval, but any shape you have that has some hard edges, like a hexagon or an octagon or a diamond, you can make a fractured card with any of those shapes. I am trying really hard to make sure that this is centered really nicely because it will matter in the end that the, that the borders look symmetrical at least. So I really did take my time and um, line that up like I said, this is real time. I have tried to edit out only the parts where I like put the card down and stepped away from my desk for a minute. Um, I am going to go ahead and adhere this to the card base. And while I am doing this, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to put on the front of my card because I hadn't made that plan yet. But when you go to all of the work of making this fabulous background, you don't want to cover it up with a huge image, right? You don't want to put a large um, font a large font um, sentiment on it or a huge image. So um, I had to think about that for a minute and I had not made that plan before I sat down to create this card. That's another thing I should have thought out first. So while I am still thinking about what I have in my stash that I could use to put on this card, I know I have some hexagon stamps, but none of them were really um, sentiment stamps that I could stamp inside that hexagon. Um, so I'm just kind of thinking about what I'm going to do and what I ultimately decided to do was just put a simple die on the front with a very small sentiment. So, um, what I ended up pulling out was this honeybee stamp, um, cherry blossom die. This is a layering die set and I should have zoomed back out. I'm sorry. I did not. And I had one in my die package already that I had created the first time I used this so that I knew how the layers went together. And then I also pulled out this, um, my favorite things, hello stamp set, because it has some really simple, could be used for anything, any type of um, event um, sentiments. So I ended up choosing the one that says from me to you. So I have this um, cherry blossom on white card sock. And instead of coloring it all in, I decided just to add a little bit of color to the center of the flowers and the leaves. And I'm using markers that were on my desktop from another project. And I liked that. And I thought I could blend it out with the, color, the colorless blender. Um, and then I decided, well, let's, instead of the colorless blender, let's pull in uh, another color from that color family, a lighter color. So I ended up pulling up two other colors. So I've got a three color blend. I'm not even coloring the whole blossom. I'm just coloring the centers. It is so, however, to be fair, on the card, I really like it. I did the same thing with the leaves. I pulled out um, a light green and a, a lighter green, and I didn't go all the way to the edge. I just went to the centers of the leaves, and I'm using colors that are in my pattern paper, so a peach and uh, a mint green. However, I did grab kind of a red brown and did the entire stem. And I think that's kind of what makes this die work on the card. There is enough contrast in the stem of the cherry blossom that when I put it on the card with the match, with the blossoms being in the same color family, it really works. So I decided just to lay it right there to the right side of my hexagon. I am going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment. I decided to stamp it on black cardstock. I am going to white heat emboss it. So I'm also going to stamp it in white pigment ink. Um, I 
had totally forgotten you could do this. And I was watching, um, Kelly Taylor did a video quite a while ago and she was kind of comparing how white embossing powder on black cardstock works with white pigment ink and how it works with Versafine ink. And you do get a much clearer, um, sentiment when you're using a white pigment ink on dark cardstock with white pigment powder. So I have started using the white pigment ink more on my black or dark colored card socks. And I have to admit, it does give it a nice, it, it does look nice. I did stamp it twice and I used just the smallest amount of pressure I could possibly get away with so that I didn't smear out those words. I am dipping this into my embossing powder container and then I'm going to heat set it with my heat gun. I do have my heat gun warming up while I am, um, it stamping and, and putting the embossing powder on. So it really does not take very long to get all of that embossing powder melted. Um, when it is completely dry, you can go over it with a cloth and remove all that um, anti-static powder. I pulled out my sentiment strip dies and I'm going to send this through my Empress machine and just trim that down. I'm going to hold it in place with some washi tape, even though I am using the magnetic mat because I don't want it so such a narrow margin. I don't want it to slip. So I ran it through on both ends. So I had a nice cut on both ends of the sentiment. I'm grabbing a pair of tweezers and my Tombow Mono glue again, because um, this is way too delicate and fiddly to try putting any other kind of adhesive on. I'm just going to glue it down flat to my card front. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue behind every leaf and every blossom, a couple little dots on the stems to keep it from flopping around too much. But it is, this is kind of one of my favorite dyes that I've purchased from Honey Bee in the last little while. But I really did get it. I um, think it looked, turned out really good using, not coloring the blossoms in all the way. Um, I live in an area where we have lots of cherry blossom trees and they bloomed at a um, near record, if not record early time this year, because we had such a mild winter and the allergies from the cherry blossoms and the grass that's already blooming and the trees are a real thing right now. Like I can't win for losing. I had this nasty cough all winter and now my allergies are in full force. So I'm just going to put the sentiment strip right across the middle of that hexagon. It is going across my sentiment or across my focal image. And that's okay. I pulled out my honeybee gems. I don't remember which ones these were. They had kind of a brown that was the same color of reddish brown as my tree stem or my, my branch. And that one just kind of flipped all the way across my desk. I did find it later and say, rescue it because um, these are pretty. I'm not going to lose one. Um, let me see if I can figure out which um, color palette they were. They're on my, they're all on my desk here, so I just have to find the right one. Um, and I did do three groups of three to get that um, odd number because you know that's my brain. It has to do things. That's my brain. Okay, I'm looking through all of my honeybees. Oh, here they are. They're the metal mix pearl stickers. Like I went um, kind of nutso and bought a whole bunch of honeybee pearl stickers, the little bling, because um, I like them. <laughs> I like that they're already sticky back. I don't have to add more glue to them. All right, so here is my fractured card. This is my first attempt at a fractured card. I think I am going to try another version um, and, and try and do it a little bit differently. So thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a couple of other videos here that I think you would like as well. I also have a subscribe button. If you have not yet subscribed, I would love it if you did. Leave me a comment down below. Have you made a fractured card before? And how did you do it? Um, have a really fabulous day. <laughs>